welcome to Monet Cafe Artistic Friends. I'm very excited to bring you a beginner series where I will be focusing on some simple steps for beginners, breaking down the painting process to help you understand it better and create more beautiful paintings. The first we'll be focusing on simple beginnings, how to simplify your subject uh, to create what's called a, a notan. It's basically a grayscale drawing and it will help your composition, color, value, everything be stronger in your painting and I think it's going to be very beneficial to you. So let's get started. But first of all, please pardon me while I introduce my line of clothing that I have designed, t-shirts and other products with the happy painting slogan I always close my show with. Now I have set up a coupon code that you can use to get 10% off. When you check out, use the promo code ARTISTIC, all in caps. It's valid until August 15th. Now I have all kinds of products. I have coffee mugs, I have tote bags, I have uh, shirts of all colors, I even have baby onesies. And they all come in either gray, pink, white, or black. Um, so you have a choice of so many different products and if you want to order any of these you just click underneath the description of this video you'll see some little items you can click on any of them and it'll take you to the Monet Cafe art store and I have other products I'm gonna be adding even more but there's some fun different products on there one of them says artist better than therapy <laughs> we know that's right and basically having these products is fun for you guys but also helps me hopefully to keep these free videos coming your way way so I'll never have to charge for them so I appreciate your support now let's get started so basically what is a no tan and why would you want to use one a no tan is the harmonious arrangement of light and dark shapes in a painting in Japanese no tan means light dark harmony and I thought it was interesting that there's actually not a, a direct English translation for this word um, so what it is it's a uh, basically well-designed arrangements of dark and light to create an impression of beauty regardless of the colors used or the subject matter this means that the no tan design is a key to a strong painting Without it, both color and light by themselves can't create a beautiful painting. So it's really all about the, the composition and the strength of the values in the painting. Many of the old master paintings have very simple no tan structures. They also have very few shapes. For example, uh, take this particular Monet masterpiece. And uh, if I convert this uh, to its no tan, it's really two basic values, as you can see here in this um, uh, way that I've transformed it. When it's converted to black and white, we just have dark and light shapes. And so when we can learn to see things in dark and light, um, we can create stronger compositions without all the fuss of getting so into all the color, all of the details. So it's a really great way for beginners to get started. So join me in this lesson where I will create numerous simplified notans and I'm also going to provide some uh, links, uh, HTML links in the about section of the video so that you can click and see the photos that I'm working from. They're my own photos, so you, you're free to use them. And you can create along with me or just practice on your own. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing we need with any painting is some inspiration. And it's always best to try to get your own photographs when you can. I know that's not always an option, especially when you're first starting out. So just be sure, um, if you're just practicing, it's fine. You can use any photograph to practice with, as long as you're not gonna try to sell your work. But if you'd like some copyright free um, images, I'll share some links uh, of places where you can find those. Now, I have, oh, keep in mind too, that if you're ever entering artwork into a competition, it's pretty typical that you uh, need to paint from your own images, okay? Not any, even if they're not copywritten, um, use your own images for that. But so what I do is I, um, this was um, just a little suggestion from another artist, is just to, to keep a whole bunch of little reference images on hand that you can um, always refer to. So I have a lot of little, photos, um, things that I've taken pictures of um, that I, I keep and I just, it's it's nice and handy and quick to just pull it out and I find working from these small images is actually um, preferable. Um, it keeps me away from the fussy details. Alright, for this first one I'm going to use a photograph that's actually um, in an area of Live Oak, Florida and uh, it's just a nice beautiful field here and I liked some of the sweeping motion here so First I've got to look at, it's a, this is a pretty wide format here, 
and I, I don't want my image to be quite that wide. I'll be working for more of a standard size. So I know I'm going to lose some of this side here. Okay, so I've got to determine what is it that I like about this. And what I like is how it, it actually almost looks like it has a path that was maybe mowed um, to go almost in a road direction, drawing the eye into it. I always love paintings, and I tend to lean towards things that have a lot of layers to them and you, where you can see in the distance because that is so fun to... Um, kind of um, intensify that feeling of depth in your painting and we can do that with some neat little art tricks okay so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to do a little value study and try to capture those things I said that I like about the image what is it I want to express and um, I have a neat little uh, little recycled sketchbook and uh, these are kind of neat I know you can work from um, just little pieces of paper if you like but these are neat because you can kind of keep them um, in your uh, keep all the ones you've done before and uh, oh, I got a little fuzz here <laughs> and um, refer back to them you may even sometime want to go back to one of the um, value studies you've done before and use it just for uh, getting creative okay so let's go ahead and break this one down and you've got a couple of options when it comes to that paper's messed up um, when it comes to what you use to do these you can use uh, artist Karen Margulis recommends markers just uh, light medium and dark I've got four here actually I just got these on Amazon it came with a set of ten but you don't need that many um, so you're just looking for a dark, a medium, and a light. So you could do it with that. You can do it with just using um, some charcoal and um, varying your pressure or uh, the hardness of your lines or the thickness of your lines. Um, you could do it with just pencil the same way. Sometimes they make pencil, or they do make pencils, that are different um, darkness or hardness. And I've got a few here that are like that. The 6B is the darkest and then the HB and the 4H. So, but you don't have to have any fancy tools. I've often just used a plain old pencil to get my value study just by using different pressures, okay? So for this example, I'm going to be using the markers and I've got to look here, okay, where is, I, I often just look at where things are on the page. I can see that this tree is really about halfway down, even maybe a little more in this composition okay so let me go ahead and sketch something in here I'll just use one of the medium markers to sketch in alright so I know I've got my tree here it's kind of big and got a lot of shape now it comes out I'm gonna let me fold this alright there we go so it comes out not quite halfway into it okay so I've got my tree shape here it's gonna come down pretty far okay so here we go with the tree and nothing has to be great with this okay I know I've got this nice sweeping motion that's curving this way okay I like that okay and I know it comes like right out from the tree here and it sweeps and curves around I just really like it where does that end it ends about halfway over here okay so I'm always using my um, um, actually that's a little low my um, proportions in what I'm working with. Now I know this tree is going to be kind of the darkest thing in the um, in the value study. Okay. I also like how this field is kind of curving back here. Okay, and then I can push those trees back. So I've got kind of another um, like sweeping curve that's going on right here, and then I've got some of these trees in the background here. Okay. So we've got another grouping of trees back in here. We've got some trees in here that are a little bit um, bigger than those, but smaller than these. All right, they're a little further away. All right, so we just got a few trees and they kind of come down on the land here. Okay, so that looks really simple, doesn't it? So let's add in our darks, our mediums, and our lights. All right, I'm using the chiseled edge of this and I'm just gonna kind of get in this um, tree shape here. Okay, so we got this, and again, look how basic and simple this is. You don't, certainly don't need a lot of detail with this. Now I know these are going to be more of the medium value. So let me grab that one. Again, I'll use the chiseled edge on this. So I'm just going to get me in some tree shapes over here. And they're gradually getting smaller as they go back. And then I'm going to get my lightest one. I think it's this one. Let me see. Well, this one's, uh, yeah, that's pretty light, but I'm going to vary my lines here. And I'm not worried about really 
tree shapes in this. I'll, uh, I'll go back and refine that. Um, now, I know the sky is going to be the lightest thing. The land is going to be fairly light because the sun is shining on it. And the trees, vertical things are almost always darker than the flat land, okay? But I know that this uh, background land here is going to be, I think I have a little bit lighter, it's going to be pretty light back in there. All right, so we've got, um, we've got our land that's kind of light, okay? We've got sun shining on the grasses. And then we've got this. I'll make some little bit of darker um, marks here just to kind of intensify that sweeping motion, okay? So we've got a little bit more of this sweeping coming around here. I could even take and make more some um, chunky marks here because we know as we get closer to the foreground these grasses and things are going to get bigger. Now see how I did this directionally to kind of get that sense of motion, okay? So now we've got a little bit of an idea for, um, for how we're going to approach this. And those are always great to do before you start a painting. Okay, you kind of work out any issues. Now, let's go ahead and do a couple more. I might speed these up, but just so you can get, kind of get the hang of things.
hope you will practice these on your own and have a lot of fun because this is really a great way to start a painting. I will have some clickable HTML links in the about section of this video which will take you right to these images that I've used. They're my images so you feel free to use them to do these notans, to paint, whatever, um, as long as it will help you grow as an artist. Now stay tuned because there's going to be more beginner videos on the way and when you do all of these in succession I pray they will just help you become a better artist. Now keep an eye out on this channel because more beginner series videos are to come where I will be taking each one of these little Notan uh, sketches and creating a painting each episode or each painting with a particular lesson specifically for the beginner. So as you can see here I am doing the one with the trees and the shadows and shadows actually happens to be the subject matter topic for our August painting challenge in our Monet Cafe art group. And in this next lesson I'll be sharing a really awesome neat new way that I've discovered to do an underpainting. I think beginners will love this. Uh, it's a neat product. You, you might can guess what it is but stay tuned for the next video for more exciting fun, lots of learning for the beginner, and I hope you'll join me. Alright guys, happy painting!